Hey everyone, Bryce Walker here with Advanced CRM Solutions. Hope you're all having a really successful month out there. Today I decided I'd throw together a little CRM survival guide for salespeople. In my position I see salespeople missing out on a huge amount of opportunity, a huge amount of potential deals uh, because of not understanding the value of the CRM or the value of performing certain actions, recording certain data, um, and following certain best practices. When you fix these challenges, you can expect to see yourself selling about 20% more cars, which is obviously a pretty significant lift for anyone. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. So the first thing I want to talk to you guys about is just putting all your prospects in the CRM. A lot of the time I find out that salespeople won't put a fresh up in the CRM if they don't perceive there to be a deal there. That's not your call, first of all. Um, the dealership pays a lot of money for that lead, right? They pay $100, $200 uh, to get that customer through the door. And as such, we should definitely be recording their information. Um, even if we know there's not an opportunity to do business right now, there could be in the future, right? And if we are capturing the correct information, we're gonna be able to continue marketing to that prospect uh, long term and that should help us capture them at some point in the future. Plus, it helps us grow our database for things like database marketing. Now, let's assume you're putting all of your prospects in the CRM. Hopefully, you're also capturing an email address for each and every one of them. Any CRM that's worth anything nowadays has marketing automation, which is uh, infrastructure that will market to your customers behind the scenes. Uh, we call it a sales assistant, right? This is something that can help you get a hold of your customer faster, help you get them in the store faster, uh, help you have good show ratios on your appointment, even help you recapture missed appointments. And of course, this all adds up to, you know, being able to close more deals. So we want to make sure that we're getting at least 75% or more of our prospects email addresses. That's a great benchmark to aim for. Uh, very few stores uh, actually achieve that milestone as a whole, but when they do, uh, they see a nice lift in their sold units. This is also something that can help out with retention and reactivation again, because we're going to be able to market to them long term. It goes a little bit further than that, guys. Also, you know, email is obviously a very valuable form of communication. We can use that to send uh, pictures, videos, e-brochures, etc., cetera, um, that we wouldn't be able to send otherwise. Um, and also, of course, a lot more people just prefer uh, email nowadays. Now, a lot of people are just more comfortable communicating via email or text nowadays anyway, right? They think if they're going to get on the phone with us, uh, they're going to be completely powerless to our, our sales mojo, right? We're going to cast a spell on them and uh, that's the end of it, right? They're just going to buy a car regardless of whether or not they want to. Uh, it's a funny, uh, it's funny stigma, but um, it's a reality, right? So uh, why wouldn't we want to give them the peace of mind that they're looking for uh, and let them feel like they have a little bit more control over the conversation by communicating via email or text. Now, if we're doing all this stuff, we should be opening a lot of appointments, right? We should be getting a lot of store visits. Um, and you wanna make sure that your sales manager is confirming 100% of your set appointments every single day, okay? If that's not happening, you need to have a polite conversation with your sales manager uh, to make sure that that starts happening. And the reason for that is because when a sales manager confirms an appointment, uh, it gives the customer a lot of peace of mind uh, about where they're going to buy from, right? It lets them know that management is engaged. Uh, you know, the salespeople aren't just running amok around the dealership. Um, and it just shows that, you know, everyone on the team is committed to providing them with a good experience. And when we do that, we typically see a minimum of a 60% show ratio. And a lot of dealerships will actually be able, be able to exceed that uh, as well. But that's just the minimum that we typically see when all the appointments are being confirmed. Let's talk follow up guys. So I work with a lot of dealerships and typically when I start working with a new store, um, a lot of the salespeople at that store have hundreds, thousands of tasks in their pipeline. 
uh, tons of stuff that is overdue or just being neglected. Um, and I understand a lot of salespeople have their own follow-up process. That's cool. I'm not trying to say that you should change that. I'm just saying that it should absolutely be documented in your CRM. And if your CRM is suggesting, uh, you know, certain follow-up milestones, it's a good idea that you're completing at least 80% of those activities, um, especially the retention and reactivation type activities, which I see just getting ignored most of the time. Um, there's no better time to call a sold customer than on their birthday, right? Um, or on a purchase anniversary. Uh, that's a good opportunity for us to remind them about our brand, uh, about us personally as salespeople to remind them they had a great experience with us when they bought their car. And it's an awesome opportunity to potentially retain them long-term, uh, maybe reactivate them in that moment, or even gain referrals from them from their network uh, because you reminded them that they had such a good experience with you. All right, last but not least, guys, let's talk about working your unconverted ups, okay? This is something else that I see getting neglected way more than I'd like. Um, a lot of people, you know, because they don't touch a lead enough or because they're not persistent enough, stuff just slips through the cracks and you look at somebody's unconverted pipeline and they've got hundreds or thousands of unconverted prospects assigned to them. Um, that's obviously a problem, guys, right? First of all, each one of those leads costs somewhere between $100 and $200 on average. Um, and so I know I wouldn't want to be the guy who has tens of thousands of dollars worth of unconverted ad spend in my pipeline. Uh, the principal, the GM, the GSM, the sales managers, they're probably not going to be very stoked about that, right? And to take it a step further, there's also a lot of missed opportunities in there for me to generate revenue that is commissionable. Now, I say this a lot to salespeople and a common response that I get is, oh, well, that stuff's all old or it's all cold or whatever, right? Well, that's a pretty bad attitude, first of all. Um, it might be true, um, but that doesn't mean that there is an opportunity there. Case studies have shown that regardless of how aged your leads are, about 20% of your open opportunities will buy a car today. They're in the market, they're ready to buy. Um, and so I don't know about you guys, but I would make 100 calls to get 20 deals any day of the week. Um, in fact, back in the day, we used to have these savages in our industry who would literally just call through the phone book. They call through the white pages. Uh, obviously, we can't do that anymore because of spam type laws. But, um, you know, none of those people were necessarily in the market. And these old school sales guys didn't care, right? They got a name and a phone number and they hit the phones and they smiled and dialed and they did whatever they could to, you know, potentially squeeze uh, some business out of that phone book. So if you take a very savage mentality towards your unconverted opportunities, you're absolutely going to see your numbers start to climb. Um, now, of course, these are lower yield than your brand new leads. So you always want to make sure that you're doing your follow up on any of your uncontacted leads or any of your warm leads before you move into this initiative of working some of your age stuff. But if you are putting a quota in place for yourself each day on how many of these uh, aged lead calls you're going to make, uh, you're absolutely going to start to see your appointment numbers climbing and your sold units climbing as well. Now that's just your unconverted deals, guys. Uh, let's talk about your sold customers, okay? So 5% of your sold customers are in the market right now ready to buy. Obviously, we always want to start with the aged ones first, right? Four to seven years is kind of the sweet spot of where we would see equity, where people are starting to get bored with their vehicle or considering re-entering the market. If they're going to re-enter the market, we want to uh, reach out to them preemptively and pull them in so that there's no chance of them going to one of our competitors. We want them to come right back to us, right, so that we can retain their business. Now, as you're calling through your sold customers, right, even though it's a lower yield than your unconverted, uh, you will also be able to fish for some referrals through that process, right? Uh, you're going to be talking to people, you're going to be reminding them that they had a great experience at your store and, and buying from you. And if they have people in their circles that are in the market for a vehicle, there's a good chance you're going to get a reference there. Let's say that you're doing a great job of maintaining your pipeline. Uh, the only unconverted leads in your pipe are the ones that you're genuinely working. You've called through all your sole customers um, and reactivated as many of those as possible and uh, you know, obviously gained some referrals in the process. The lowest tier uh, yield 
for this data mining initiative is your lost deals. And 1% of those are gonna be in the market at any given time. Now, this is typically a much larger category because we're always gonna have more lost deals. Um, so it's gonna take you more time, a little bit more elbow grease. I always recommend starting off with an e-blast to just touch that whole group of people. Uh, when you do that, you're gonna get a lot of the lower hanging fruit uh, reaching back out to you so that you don't have to make hundreds of phone calls just to find you know, a couple good leads out of all those lost deals. But guys, when you're really, really diligent about managing your pipeline and when you're bringing your A game and doing the best you can to convert every single lead that comes across your desk, uh, you will absolutely sell more cars. This is just a numbers game. So anyway, guys, I hope some of this information has been valuable to you. If you have questions about how you can utilize your CRM better to sell more cars, please feel free to re reach me anytime. Uh, you can reach out to me via Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, email, phone, text, I don't care. Um, happy to help you guys out. Definitely want to see you selling more cars. And guys, if you have tips, tricks, ideas, uh, processes, best practices, any of that stuff that you think is valuable, uh, please go ahead and leave those in the comments. I'd love to wrap with you about that stuff. Always looking for you know unique insight from the people out there in the trenches. Um, your feedback is definitely appreciated. And guys, same goes for challenges. If you're running into a major speed bump with your CRM initiative at your store, uh, please mention what problems you're having in the comments. I'd love to see how I can help you out with that stuff. Anyway, guys, I appreciate your time. Hope you have a good rest of the month and I'll talk to you later.